J Balvin just dropped his Jordan 3. I love the Medellin Sunset inspiration. So today we're gonna beat him to the punch and create the J Balvin Jordan 4. Gradient colors and custom J Balvin Jordan 4 back tabs are on point, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let me show you how it's done. First things first, we're gonna take out the laces and insoles so we can start taking apart these shoes. The base shoe that we're gonna be using for these J Balvin 4 customs are the Orange Metallic Jordan 4s from 2019. It's a perfect base shoe and I love the orange accents. It's gonna be perfect for the twist that I'm gonna give the sunset on these sneakers. Instead of using colors from the Medellin Sunset, we're gonna go with colors from the Phoenix Sunset. We'll get to that later on in this video. First, we gotta take off the back tabs off these shoes. We got our X-Acto knife. I went ahead and taped it up just so we can have the tip of the X-Acto knife. That way when I go in and remove the back tab, the other part of the X-Acto knife doesn't accidentally slice the leather. Got the back tabs off, no issue with that. We'll save these for a future project. Next, we're gonna do some prep work. Using some acetone and cotton balls, we're gonna wipe down the uppers and the midsoles. Before all that, using some 400 grit sandpaper, we're gonna sand down the entire midsole to get it ready for a paint job. Let's prep the uppers. The only areas to stay away from is the orange chrome because the acetone will wipe that away. Prep is complete, now we're back to the back tab area. When I removed the back tabs, all the old stitching came off from the white leather. We gotta go in and replace that before we can add our new back tabs. So for this, we're gonna be using some white thread and a needle. It's gonna be a very time consuming step to do this right. We don't want it to look janky. The technique to adding the simulated stitching onto the leather seems complicated, but it's actually really easy and very time consuming. To do this right, it's gonna take me about three hours. First, I'm gonna get the thread through the very first hole where the stitching ends. After that, I'm gonna create a little knot. Every other stitch, I unthread the needle, stick the needle back in, thread the needle, pull it back out, and then create a stitch. It's a very repetitive process, but it's the way to get the cleanest stitch lines possible. Prepper is complete, now it's time to coffee up these shoes. I wanna get a nice consistent cream tone throughout the entire upper. The best way to do that is by using coffee. We gotta take a water right here, we gotta heat it up, pour some coffee in, then mix it up real well. After that, we'll put the shoes inside. Let's do that now. All right, after about two hours, we got the shoes out of the coffee. These look great. We got a nice consistent cream throughout the entire shoe. Now we gotta put them in the washing machine with our laundry bag and detergent to fully flush out the coffee and smell. All right guys, so we got the shoe out of the washing machine. It's all dry, looking good. We washed away all the coffee and the coffee smell. As you can see, we got a nice consistent cream tone on the midsole and the sole. Same thing with the netting, I love that tone. Sock liner looks great. The one thing I'm not too happy about is the leather. In some areas, it's nice and beige. Other areas, such as the side, it's very white still. I'm not a big fan of it. So we're gonna tape off everything but the white leather so we can go in with some cream paint to even it all out. All taped up, the only thing that's exposed is the leather. Like I mentioned, we wanna even out the tone, so we got some cream paint mixed up. I only mixed up white with a little bit of brown. Let's go ahead and use the airbrush.
got the tape off. I love how the uppers turned out. We got a nice consistent crimp throughout the entire shoe. Now we're on to the back tabs. Shout out to All Shoes Matter on Instagram. He did a beautiful job creating these. These were made fully from scratch. He did a lot of work to create these. He had to design them, 3D print, cast the mold to get them to this point. As you can see on one of the back tabs, we got the J Balvin smiley face logo. And on the opposite, we got the Nike Air. If you need any custom back tabs, make sure to check out All Shoes Matter on Instagram. Now let's keep it moving. On the back, as is, the surface is pretty smooth. We gotta use a Dremel to roughen it up. That way when we go in and glue it onto the shoes, it adheres properly. Prep is complete on the back side. Now we're on to the front side. We gotta get ready for the paint job. First, we're gonna be using some 400 grit sandpaper. We're gonna go over the entire thing. That'll be part of the prep work. All done with the setting on the front side and back side. Now we're gonna go outside and spray some Bulldog Adhesion Promoter. This is gonna help the paint stick a lot better on the front side and the glue on the back side. Let's go outside. This stuff stinks. Onto the stitching, we're not gonna directly sew this back tab onto the shoe. We gotta add some simulated stitching. So we gotta use some white thread and a needle. Pretty simple stuff. Stitching is complete. Now we gotta apply some glue onto the back side of the back tabs and onto the shoes, specifically on the rough areas, such as the gray and the white. All right, it's been about an hour since we let the glue cure. Now we're gonna attach it onto the shoes. For the Nike, we're gonna put it on the left shoe, and the J Balvin tab, we're gonna put it on the right shoe. Let's heat it up and stick it together. Back tabs are attached, they look really good. Everything lined up nicely. Now we still have to go in and apply some glue into the leather right here. First, we gotta tape it so we can seal everything up and wrap this part up. Back tabs are fully installed. These are looking really sick. As is, they kind of look like off-white Jordan 4s. We still have to go in and apply the paint job. The reason why I didn't do the paint job before I installed them onto the shoes is because I didn't want to risk getting any glue on the paint job. It's gonna be a gradient, so it will be really hard to touch up in case I got any glue in those areas. I didn't want to risk it, so we'll do that later. First, we're gonna tape off the midsole, then we'll come back to the back tabs later. Tape job's complete, onto the gradient paint job. First, we're gonna lay down a white base coat so all of these colors can pop. After that, we're gonna start off with the yellow, move on to the light orange, then orange, red, light purple, then dark purple. For this part, just like the J Balvin 3s, we're gonna start off with the yellow back here, work our way to the orange, then red, and finish it off with the purple.
typically when it comes to a sunset gradient, I always start with the lightest color which is yellow and work my way up to purple, one darker color at a time. Once the first and base color is down, then you can start the gradient effect with the next color being light orange and then so on. The key is to not cake on the paint, but lightly mist it onto the surface in the direction you want the gradient to happen. Don't spray the opposite direction at any time because that will completely ruin the effect. Lastly, dropping the PSI on your compressor can also help create a smoother gradient effect by having less paint come out of the airbrush. All right guys, that's how it's done. We got a nice, beautiful, consistent gradient. We start off with the yellow, worked our way to a light orange, orange, red, orange, red, violet, then darker purple. Same thing on the opposite side. It looks beautiful, nice and vibrant. Now we just gotta go outside and protect it with a gloss finisher. Gradient's complete, now we're on to the back tabs. First, we gotta do some taping so we can lay down the paint job. All taped up, let's lay down our white base coat, then we can move on to the gradient. Same exact thing as the midsoles. We'll start with the yellow, work our way to the orange, red, then purple, from the bottom to the top. I'm gonna use the same technique I did for the gradient paint job for these metals on these back tabs. The only change is the direction of the gradient, which will be from down to up. With a smaller space to work with for the gradient effect, I gotta make sure I'm not caking on the paint and that I'm constantly spraying in the top direction to avoid getting any paint on the areas like the yellow. Having the PSI on medium level on my compressor is also key to getting a nice smooth gradient effect. All done with the back tab, the gradient matches the mentals perfectly. Now we still have one more step to do and it's gonna be the most time consuming out of this whole project. We gotta go in with some yellow paint and a small detail brush and hit all of the leather edges. We don't wanna get any paint on the leather so we gotta be very careful. We gotta hit every single part of this shoe. All done with the yellow trimming, this part came out perfect. They look identical to the J Balvin Jordan 3s. For this part, it took two different things, a steady hand and tons of energy. Shout out to Ghost. Let's lace them up. All right, everybody, that's gonna bring us to an end on these custom J Balvin Jordan 4s. Let us know in the comment section which version you like better, the Jordan 3 that's coming out, or these custom Jordan 4s. I'll leave it up to you guys. In today's video, I showed you guys how to do four major things. The first one being how to age your sneaker and get a consistent cream tone. Second, I showed you guys how to do a sunset gradient. For my version, I went with more vibrant colors to represent the Arizona sunset, because that's a sunset that I know best. The third thing I showed you guys how to do is replace the back tabs on these Jordan 4s. These back tabs are key to this project. Without them, we wouldn't have some J Balvin Jordan 4s. And lastly, I painted all the edges of the leather with some yellow paint. That part by far took the longest. Overall, these customs came out beautiful, and I'm looking forward to see what J Balvin does in the future with the Jordan 4. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll catch you guys next Monday. See y'all.